So now in this video, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. So here's a 741 op amp. In the last video, I made a voltage follower, which is really easy. You take the output and feed it to the inverting input. And whatever voltage you give to the non-inverting input will be the voltage at the output. So we're modifying this slightly. And we are actually going to feed a voltage to a transistor because it can handle more power. So to begin with, we're just going to do a demonstration of how this circuit works. And then I'll show the uh, power handling capabilities after that. But uh, to begin with, we'll look at the uh, basics of this circuit. So we have the uh, 741 op amp right there. And first, let's get to the signal right over here so I have a trim pot here the 741 op amp the output does not go all the way to the negative rail or all the way to the positive rail for that matter but uh, for this video I'm just gonna make it a little harder to get to the negative rail by putting a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor here actually that's the wrong one 2.2 kilo ohm resistor to the negative rail. So that comes to one of the pins over here on the end. The middle pin is the wiper pin. So that's connected to the slider. And then these other ones, they're connected to the resistive element going from one end over to the other, looped around there. And then the wiper slides across that resistive element and goes there. So I'm putting a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor there to hold it up about two volts, approximately away from the uh, negative rail right there and might as well take this jumper now that jumper is connecting from the uh, trim pod output to the non-inverting input right there now we are going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor that's going to go to the base of an NPN transistor and ultimately this controls how well the transistor is on or off basically and actually I'm two spots away from where I need to be so right there and we're going to take the NPN transistor so this is a 2N2222 and depending on your current needs any NPN bipolar junction transistor for this circuit any NPN bipolar junction transistor will work but I'm probably going to put somewhat high current through here and uh, so you need to make sure whatever transistor you use can handle the current. So the collector, which is the pin on the right, goes to the positive rail. The base, the middle pin, goes to where the resistor is. And then the emitter is going to go down one row where it will be by itself for a little while. So let's push that back. You can see that we have the uh, top pin, the collector, to the positive rail. Middle pin, the base, to the resistor there. And the emitter down here collector base emitter. I think I said that right earlier, but if I didn't, that's what it is. Collector base emitter. Now, we're going to make a load. So we're dealing with potentially 12 volts. And so a one kilo ohm resistor is about as uh, low as we want to go to make sure we are always safe. So we're going to put a one kilo ohm resistor there. We're going to use that to set the current through an LED based on the voltage that is applied and also the LED will block about 1.6 or more volts depending on how much current is flowing through. So right now the power supply is off. We'll get the uh, power supply there and we will turn the power supply on and we can basically adjust the uh, brightness of the LED. Okay, I forgot something. I forgot the feedback. So, there you can see we got the jumper there and uh, the most important part of it so it's not a total loss that I miss this I'm going to take a red jumper here and as you can see that goes to the emitter of the transistor and when you're studying transistors the emitter follower or common collector is basically wiring the transistor like this you get a voltage uh, there when you have uh, resistance there and you have current going through the uh, base but uh, for this video we'll just stick to the op amp version so that's going to the inverting input so now when I adjust the trim pot the LED is going to get dimmer so 
that's as low of a voltage as it can go. There you can see I'm turning it there. And uh, so, so that's it. We have the voltage at the input becoming the voltage at the emitter of the transistor. The reason why it's holding that voltage is because we're feeding that voltage back to the inverting input. And when you have a voltage at the non-inverting input and a voltage at the inverting input, it changes what the output is. And the output keeps changing as long as you wire it correctly. You got negative feedback here. The output changes to make sure that the voltage at the inverting input is the same as the non-inverting input. So that's why we have the voltage that we set there, right there. And we can, of course, measure that right now. So the meter is already on, set to measure voltage. We can look at the voltage at uh, the non-inverting input right there, 5.625. So I think it's going to be pretty much exactly the same when we go to the emitter right here, 5.629. So just a few hundredths of a volt different. So practically the same right there. Now, we can't go all the way to the rail, but we can go up a bit. And uh, so in any case, that's the main takeaway right there. We got the voltage at the non-inverting input. We got the same voltage at the uh, emitter of the transistor because of this feedback right there. So everything involved up here doesn't matter so much. The output will either raise or lower depending on whether the uh, inverting input is higher or lower than the non-inverting input. In any case, it uh, goes in the direction needed to, to equalize those two voltages. That's the main takeaway right there. So now I have a 10 ohm, 10 watt resistor ready and we're going to measure voltage to uh, begin with. And so this uh, isn't the ideal circuit for uh, powering this, but it will be enough to uh, prove a point. So going to there, we're going to look at the voltage at the non-inverting input. Looks like it's about 3 volts. I have 6 volts at uh, the power supply. And of course we got about 3 volts there. And first we're going to go up here, right to the output. And if we go right to the output, then the output voltage up there is the 3 volts, or the 2.9 volts, I should say. And so we are getting the voltage right at the output here. So what I'm going to do, turn this meter off now. First we're going to measure the current that the op amp output will provide to this 10 ohm resistor right there. And you will see here that it's nowhere the current we would expect. It's only about 8 milliamps of current because the uh, output cannot supply a lot of power, which in this case we have the voltage but less current, so ultimately less power. So now we're going to zoom in and put the uh, feedback right there, negative feedback jumper, back to the emitter of the transistor, making an emitter follower with the uh, NPN transistor there. And again, we're going to do this quick because it's not really made for this much power, but the main takeaway is now you'll see that we have that voltage, about 2.9 volts, divided by 10 ohms of resistance, which is about 290 milliamps of current. And these resistors get really hot, be careful touching them, but we did that uh, quickly. So, in any case, that's why I needed a transistor that can handle a lot of current, and uh, this one can't handle as much as I would like, but it did okay for this, uh, for this video. I actually think I fried one while I was uh, testing this out a little bit ago, so I kept it short now. But in any case, you could see there that uh, the output of op amps, at least all the ones I have, you can actually short circuit them. Let's, uh, let's do that really quick if I have a jumper. So I got a jumper here. I'm going to go right to the uh, negative rail and we'll probably see that same amount of current right there. So it will output more current with higher voltages. I lowered the voltage to 6 volts. I think that's why I fried a transistor. I kept raising the voltage and then all of a sudden the uh, current went uh, down rapidly. So pretty sure that's when I fried the 
uh, other transistor. So I was a little more careful now. But the main takeaway was that you could see that with the uh, transistor here, we can provide a whole lot more current than the output of the op amp by itself. And uh, I'm off a spot. That's why it's not uh, passing current. There you can see we got the current that we expect, whereas we won't have it if we go directly to the output of the uh, op amp, which I'll do one more time right there. That is our, uh, that's our limit right there. So the transistor allows more power. So hope that all made sense. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.